free agent signing process. Um, wow, that, that would take a couple days to talk through. But I've been with three NFL clubs, um, I think 16 or 17 drafts. Every one of them has been different. All three teams approached it differently. Um, we changed as we went, we grew and learned. The um, limitation that's been placed due to the CBA contract has changed. College free agency in terms of the money uh, given out uh, to some degree. We had really developed a system when I was in Atlanta through a lot of research that, that basically told us the guys with the highest hit rate in college free agency overall significantly at that time research indicated were the ones, if you did a good job evaluating, the ones that you paid the most. Okay? Now, sometimes you pay somebody $10,000 close to draft and they last three days and coaches decide they don't want to come and you move on. That's usually not the case. When coaches work as hard as the scouts do and they do during a process, and you, you've signed a college free agent to a, a fairly large amount to me, which is anything over $5,000. Uh, because of the budget is now we get 60 or 65 total, um, it used to be unlimited. Um, that's a lot of work and people are invested in their athletes. They want them to succeed, okay? So they have a higher incidence of making the 53, which is ultimately the most important factor, is that your athlete makes the 53. That's where you make money. It's not, unless they're high level, it's not enough miniature or zero sign dollar bonus. It's about finding the right club and the right fit, the right need, and, uh, and the coaches being orientated towards your athlete. Okay, so because the rules changed, um, every team has its own unique system. However, it all boils down to this. They all rate players, A, B, C, D, okay, in terms of levels of free agents. The top free agents are usually the guys that everybody thought was going to be drafted. And in that room, they had a draft of the grade on that player. It could be anywhere from fourth round down and still on the board. Those players go to the top of the list. Okay, this is how it works. All right? Those players not drafted on a free agent board, a college free agent board, get peeled off that front board and they get where they go to the top of the list. Those are the eight players. Those are the bets you've already determined that if you believe in your evaluation system, those are the best players. Those are the ones that fully concentrate on. And then it goes down. Now, uh, every team's different. I've been in charge, you know, as GM and twice as college director, so I've had the opportunity to run that college free agency in three different uh, locations. We call unrelenting, okay? And we had everybody call. Why? Because almost everybody in the building is involved in the process. So just let's just count. So if you get frustrated, if you're, if you're well, or if you think, hey, you know, the Chicago Bears really like my guy. He's got like ten calls. Well, here's why: you, you have an area scout that's watching. You have a positional cross check scout that's watching. You have a on the in the fall a either national or regional cross check person. So there's there's three scouts. College director, there's four. Okay, GM, that's five. Position coach, that's six. Coordinator, that's seven. And if you like them enough, the head coach is getting on the phone. That's eight. That's eight people that have touched your prospect on film. They know your prospect. And we want them to know that we know you. And here is the fit for this team. Here's our roster. Here's where there's space. Hey, even if we draft two corners, there's still room on here for another corner. Here's what our roster looks like. He's going to hear that message from a lot of different directions. Now, some people are calling just to establish rapport, okay? Because rapport is important because ultimately, um, I think you all will probably tell that your client this at some time, you're the boss, but they're trusting you to make the right decisions usually, unless there's a mom or a dad or an uncle involved. Uh, too extensively. So there's a lot of people involved in the process, so they're going to get a lot of calls. So what I guess I'm telling you as an agent, that's normal. Okay, if the club is doing its due diligence, 
your athlete will get a lot of calls. We called all of them, A, B, C, and D. A's got so many calls, B, so many calls, C's, D's. Even the guys who were D's, which we would call zero dollars, there would be no offer of a signing bonus. There would normally be a tryout. Those players got several calls, okay, because those are very valuable players, because what? Those players make teams, okay? We always felt that at the end of the day, okay, that if we missed on everything during this friends thing called the college free agency, for those that have been involved, in it, it's, uh, it can be crazy, it can be a while. Uh, it's it's you know price is right for two and a half hours and it's just boom you're going at it. If we missed on everybody, we could all go home. We could get up in the morning. We could start calling the people that are still available, checking with agents, seeing who's still available, and that you know what we still have a pretty good chance that two or three of those players can make the big three roster, even if we didn't pay them. Okay, now they might make it, but the reason you're paying ten thousand dollars for somebody else is because you think that player not only will make it, but he makes your club a step better. Okay.